Hey, in this video, we're gonna go over the middle game strategy. One of the most popular questions students ask me about is what to do in the early middle game stage right after the opening. In the opening, it is more or less clear what to do. You gotta develop your pieces somehow, hopefully towards the center. So let's take a look at some standard setup. And it doesn't really matter because in this case, we're talking in general. What is your middle game plan or rather what it should be? So let's say we play some standard moves. Let's say black goes h6 to prevent white from going bishop g5. Let's say white plays the same, bishop e3, just developing the pieces somehow. For example, black goes bishop b6 to secure the position of this bishop. And what to do afterwards? Because so far everything was more or less clear. Develop your minor pieces and castle, okay? And pretty much everybody knows that. What to do next? We know that in general, in a game of chess, you want to checkmate your opponent's king. But right now there is no opportunity and it's not even close for white to do so. And that situation puzzles a lot of players and it is totally unclear what you should do while you also have virtually unlimited number of choices. And I actually checked this in the database. Let me even share it with you. So here's the game database from Lee Chess. And here in the right corner, you can see the statistics of different moves that was played here. And as you can see, there is no clear winner here, as it often happens, where one move is just far more often played than others. Here White played all kinds of moves. Queen d2, 95, bishop b6, a3, d4, a4, knight h2, bishop b3, knight f4, knight e2. And they all are more or less popular. That just goes to show you that White is really confused with these huge choice of options, they're not sure which one to opt for, and more generally, what should be the White's plan here. Okay, let's figure it out. What should you do after you've finished your development in the opening? The first thing that you should do and that people often forget to do is to develop your queen. Because once you finish development of your minor pieces, meaning knights and bishops, the development of your pieces is not actually finished because aside of your minor pieces, you also have your heavy pieces, right? Therefore, you gotta bring them into play. And the first task is to develop your queen. Therefore, you gotta be careful here as queen is a precious piece and your opponent may wish to attack it. And therefore, you gotta find a secure square for your queen. For example, right now you've got two possible options, queen to d2 or queen to e2. But if you go queen to e2, black can potentially go knight d4 and chase your queen here. Even though it's not that dangerous, you can exchange this knight, but nevertheless, it is better to keep your queen in safety. That is why let's take a move back here and instead play queen to d2. Now your queen is developed and you can already see that this queen actually does some job. It supports the bishop here, potentially it even supports potential sacrifice on the h6 where you can try attacking the opponent's queen, uh, king, I'm sorry. Therefore, queen d2 already improves your position to some extent. Okay, let's see what you're gonna do next. Black goes bishop e6 and let's say you go bishop b3 symmetrically. Uh, just a quick disclaimer, this is not an open theory lesson, okay? I'm not going into the variations, specific variations of this opening. I've got a lot of videos in, on this channel where I show you specific opening moves. This video is more about general planning, general patterns that you can use in any position, in any opening, after any opening, I should say, okay? Let's say Black goes Queen D7 symmetrically. Now, what should you do next? Following the same principle that we talked about previously, once you developed your minor pieces, you gotta also activate your heavy pieces, meaning your queen and your rooks, okay? So we already developed the queen and now it's time to bring your rooks into play, which may give you a hint to move your rook to the central file. And it is usually advised to start actually from the queen side rook, or I should say from the rook that was not involved in castling. Because while castling, you already brought this rook into play at least to some extent. And therefore it makes sense for now to bring your queenside rook into play and put it in the center of file. Let's say black does the same. Now we sort of developed all of your pieces in fact, including heavy pieces. What are you gonna do next? The next stage is to start attacking. But how can you do that when the position is closed? Indeed, you can't. And therefore you gotta open up the position first. And you open up the position by moving your pawns and usually we're talking about central pawns. Why is that? Well, first of all, center is the most important, most critical area of the chessboard. And if you can get control over the central squares, you will dominate. That's why you want to expand there. Secondly, moving your 
a side pawns usually doesn't do much. For example, even if you advance your pawns to h5, that does not really open the position in any way. If you move your g pawn forward, potentially it can open up the position here on the queen side, but it also would expose your king, and black can po possibly take advantage of it by starting to sacrifice the bishop here and opening up the position around your king, so you don't want that. Similarly, if let's say you try pushing the a pawn forward, first of all, you can't really do that, and it wouldn't really get the job done anyway. That is why we need to pay attention to the central pawns. And with that being said, you may come to the move pawn to d4. So once again, stage one, you develop all your pieces, including have the pieces. Stage two, you look for advancement of your pawns to open up the game. Let's see what can be the result in position. Let's say we trade off all of the pieces here. Temporarily, you already attack the pawn here. So you can already see why opening up the position is good. Your pieces get more open space, more open lines and diagonals, and you can start putting more direct pressure onto your opponent's position. Right now, they already have to take care of their pawn by playing pawn to a6. And if you want to keep pushing, you can once again follow the same guideline, open up the position further, playing pawn to e5. Now, after an exchange, you can see that your queen is getting even more active, your rook is now taking the black's queen, as well as your bishop is now hitting the opponent's bishop. That is how opening up the position and playing those subtle pawn moves help you to make your position a lot more aggressive, with a lot more attacking opportunities. Right now, black would have to move their queen away, and now you can start taking here on e6 to break their pawn structure. Now they've got this weakness, and you can play rook e1, for example, and now attack this weakness, and once again you see that you already put some pressure onto the black's position. Therefore, stage 1, develop your minor pieces, then have the pieces, open up the position, and after that you go to, you know, stage 2 and 3, open up the position, and attack. Let's come back to the kind of starting position of this example, and let's think if there's any other plan available for white here. So far we talked about the d4, the central breakthrough, which is the most powerful. But if you're thinking about an alternative plan, you may also come to realize that in addition to moving the d pawn forward, you may possibly push your f pawn forward, and that would also allow you to put some pressure on the black's position or to open up the position. But right now, obviously the pawn cannot go forward because it's blocked by the knight. And therefore it gives you an idea that you move, you may move your knight away somewhere. And after that, let's say black goes rook d8, here you can push pawn to f4. And even though it's another pawn, and normally it is inferior compared to the central advancement, because f4 it is slightly on the side, but nevertheless it still pursues the more or less the same idea. You want to open up the position, and you can already see that now, with the help of this pawn, your rook starts operating across the f-file, and you also put some pressure onto the black's position. So let's say they take, you recapture by the rook, and they play something like knight to e5, bring the knight into the center, and now after, let's say, an exchange of bishops, you already have a pleasant choice. You can double rooks across the f-file by playing rook to f1, let me actually execute here, and now you're exerting strong pressure here against the black's king side, and you can bring more pieces there and develop your attack, or because you now have these open lines, you can even start attacking your opponent directly. You can actually sacrifice your rook here on f6 to break up the pawn structure around the opponent's king, and after that queen takes h6, and actually white's winning. Even though there is no direct checkmate right now, but you've got so many threats that you can execute here against the black's exposed king. You can bring the rook here, and some, somehow involve it into the attack. You can potentially bring your one knight to d5, another knight to g4. You've got just here too many threats to cover. Let's say, just an example line, black goes c6 to take away the square from you. You can go d4, kicking this knight away, which also threatens d5 to capture the bishop. So let's say they trade, go knight g6, and now your knight can go forward, knight g4, threatening knight takes f6, and black can't really stop it, because you can also play rook f1 on the next move and support. This knight takes f6 move, so black cannot stop it, and you will checkmate black, or they'll have to sacrifice a lot of material. Of course, I can't explain the entire chess strategy within one short video, it's a fairly large subject. Uh, if you want to know more about this, you may click the link below the video and uh, check out my free training, where I go more in-depth into this subject and into the core of my system that helped me to become a grandmaster and that, and that I now teach to my students. But nevertheless, I hope that this video was uh, helpful as 
a lot of videos out there tell you how to play different opening positions, end game positions, tactical puzzles, but these most fundamental things that you gotta understand are somewhat missing, so I hope that it was helpful or at least refreshing. Best of luck with your chess battles, and I'll talk to you in the next videos.